Do you ever need to automatically populate ID or sequence numbers in formulas or manually entering isn't cutting it? As an example, if you're moving data around, it may be easy to lose track of what your last ID number is. In that case, a formula isn't gonna work and you may not remember what it is to enter it manually. So let's go ahead and create our app script and we'll go ahead and program this out. So once the app script project is open, we'll go ahead and just call this script. And then the function we're gonna use is called on edit. And this automatically runs every time you edit the Google Sheet. And so then inside of these parentheses, we're gonna use E. It doesn't matter what you use, we're just gonna use E for simplicity. This is called the event object and it carries data about what was changed and what was entered. And so we can use it to figure out what tab was edited, what column and row and so forth. And so let's go ahead and grab that data first. And so we're gonna use a couple here. So first we're gonna just say let range equals e dot range. And so this is how we assign what's called a variable. And then we're saying e dot range is now going to be equal to range. So when we use range in the future, like in this example, we're gonna get the column and we can say range because now it, whatever is e dot range is now in range. And so here we can do get column. And then we're gonna go ahead and do this for the row as well. And then finally for the value. And then finally we need to get the tab or the sheet that was changed. And we're gonna use a, another E method. And this will be sheet. And then we're gonna go back. Instead of using range, we're gonna go back to E and use source instead of range. And then we'll get active sheet from there. So just like that. Now we can create an if statement to determine when we want this to actually run. So this will run every time the sheet is edited, but we don't want it to just willy nilly add ID numbers. So what we're going to use here is only if it's on this data tab and only if there is actually a value entered. And so let's say you were trying to delete something. We don't want it to keep adding ID numbers. And lastly, if there is not an ID number already in this field. So what we're going to do here is let's start with a sheet. And so sheet.get name. And we're going to say, is it equal to data? And so if you notice here, we have a single equals and this is assignment, like I said before. And so whatever's on the right side is now being assigned to this. Now when we have two equals is a comparative. And so what this is going to come up with is true or false. And this if statement, we need everything to be true to run. So we have our first condition to add another condition. We're going to use two ampersands and then we can add another condition. And so if you remember here, we're going to say value is not equal to blank. And so this is equals to comparative. And then this is does not equal comparative. And then let's do one more. And this will be, we need to figure out if there's already a value in here. So we're gonna ping the sheet and get range with our row that we have from up here. And then we're gonna do comma, and then now we can put in the column. So the column in this case is the first one. If you have it in a different column, just count over. So for example, if it was in this one, you would just go one, two, three, four, five, and you use five instead of one. But in this case, we're gonna use one, and then get value, and that's gonna get whatever value is in that range. And what we're gonna say here is, is it equal to blank or no value? And so if all those are true, then we're gonna run what's in here. And so just as far as the syntax, we have if, we have a open and clothing parentheses, and then we have these curly braces, and then any code in here is gonna run. And then you'll notice overall in this function, there's another curly brace here and here. And so we can kind of nest these is how that works. So you can actually do even another if statement inside here. And then again, you would do those parentheses, your if statement, and then these brackets inside of that one. Or you could do another one, you could copy and paste this, and then you could do slightly different variations if you wanted to refer to another sheet, etc. All right, so let's go ahead and run with this one now for now. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the property service to store the ID number because we're assuming that maybe you're moving some of this data around or resorting it. So we can't ping this and figure out the last ID. So there's something in the script over here, project settings, and then we scroll down 
we have script properties. And this gives us a quick way to save something. So I'm going to call this property ID. And then for the value, I'm going to set the next ID that we're going to use. And so what would we do here? It'd be 10,006. So I'm going to just put that in here. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So you can set whatever this value to whatever you want to start with, and then we'll be good to go. So that's the only other thing you need to do outside of the script. And then let's go ahead and finish this up. So let ID, and we're going to do that property service, get script properties, and then finally get that actual property, which was ID. So this is the name that you put on that. In my case, we did ID. And then we're going to set that value in the sheet. Now, one thing we need to do here is it stores it as a text. So I want to change it into a number. And so I'm going to do parse int. And that's how we change a string to a number. And that's going to allow us to iterate our ID. So next, we're going to do a similar to what we had here, except we're going to set value. So we can either copy and paste or we can type this from scratch. Sheet dot get range row and one. And then this will be set value. And now we can do that ID. So now the only thing we need to do is we need to add one to this ID and save it back to the property services. So it's ready for the next run. So what we're going to do here is ID is equal to ID plus plus or plus equal one. Either one works. I'm going to do plus equal one because it probably makes more sense if you don't do programming all the time. So one thing you'll notice is here I had let ID and here I just have ID. And so this is because I'm creating this variable. And then after I use it, I'm going to reassign that to ID plus equal one. So now ID is going to not equal what it did here. It's going to be ID plus one. And so now we can set that back to our property service. So it's ready for the next time that we're going to go. And then this time, instead of get property, we're going to do set property. And in this case, we have key and value. And so this would be ID and ID. All right, so that's the basics. I'm going to show you how to add more than one tab. And then we'll wrap up with showing you how to combine a number with text, like a prefix in case that's something you need to do. So if we go over here, we can go ahead and just add something here, for example, Tom, and then we're gonna see that 1006 or 10,006. And then if we add something else here, like Jack, that should be 1007. And sure enough, there it is. And so now we can fill in the rest of this and it's not going to matter if I can spell Smith correctly because there already is that ID there. And then so if I even deleted this one, um, let's just clear row. And then I added another one, Peter. I'm gonna save that ID and go to the next one. So that's the advantage of using this is that even if you delete it or perhaps you moved it or resorted, you know, maybe you sorted this column. So if I did this and then came down here and added another one, there we go. And it's still gonna come up with the right one, even though that last one's up here. All right, so next let's look at if you had multiple tabs. And so let's say this one's called other data. And what if you wanted this to be able to run on both using the same sequence? So in that case, what you would do is here, we want this not just to be data, but data and other data. And so what we need to do here, because we're gonna add an or, an or is gonna mess up our if, unless, we put another set of parentheses. So what we're going to say here is I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to do two vertical pipes on my keyboard. This is above the enter and I hit shift and then here other data. And so what this is saying is it's evaluating this separate from the rest of the statement. And so as long as one of these is true, then this will be true. And then it can go through the rest of these. Is this true? Yes. Is this true? Yes. So if I just pull this out, then it wouldn't quite work as expected. In this case now, if I come over to other data and I add one, and so that should be um, 10,010. There we go. If we come over here and add one, it should come up with 11. And sure enough, there it is. So that allows you to toggle back and forth. Now, if you had multiple tabs where you wanted to use different IDs, 
Then what you want to do is in this project settings, you'd want to do multiple properties. And so here we do another one. And so this could be, for example, other ID. And then whatever those are starting with. And then you can go back here. And then, like I talked about earlier, you could duplicate this if. And then let's go ahead and just set this up real quick. And then here in a moment, we'll wrap up with showing you how to incorporate text. So here we're going to do other ID and then other ID. So now if I come over to here, if I add another one, this should be starting at that other one. So um, I'm just going to repeat a name here. I don't have to think another one. There's 100. If I come over here, another one that should be 101 now. And if I come over here, this is going to be its own thing. So I'm going to log in over here as well. And there's that. 12. So that's how you could do two different sequencing on the same sheet. So I'm going to get rid of this for now and then get rid of this tab. And then what I'm going to wrap up with is what happens if you want to use a prefix. So I'm going to delete these for now. And then let's say I'm just going to use PRE actually. Um, and then this I need to change to maybe text or none. And then I'm going to do pre here. Let's say for a lot of pop up for me. There we go. So what we're going to do here is kind of a combo. And so I'm going to go back here and reset this. So edit, I'm going to delete this one and this one will go back to six. So what we're going to do here then is we can actually do the same thing in this function. And I'm going to use something called a template literal. And so here um, we're going to put that ID inside that. So this is back ticks. This is where the tilde is or above the tab on my keyboard on a Windows Mac. It may look a little different, but um, it's back tick. So it's distinct from a single um, tick or double quote. Then we use this dollar sign and curly braces and we can wrap a variable. So we have this ID and we can wrap it in here and then it's going to display it. So now we can add that pre here and it's going to add it like that. So let me go ahead and jump in here and let's add Tim. It should be 1006 and then Tom it should be 1000 or 10,007, just like that. So that's an easy way to be able to add a prefix there, a standard prefix. So this could be whatever prefix you want. It could just be P for example, and come out over here and then add Jack and that will be P 10,008, just like that. All right, so that is it for today's video. Now, if you don't need a script to accomplish this and you actually want to use a formula, I'm going to link to another video that's going to show you how to do just that. So thanks for watching and have a great day.